When you first open Photoshop, this is what you're going to see. This is your home. Here you have some tutorials um, and you can see recent files that you've opened and you can open those again. You can also change how they're um, sorted. Here you can access tutorials on how to use various tools in Photoshop and you can also access your Lightroom photos or cloud documents and also look at recently deleted stuff. So that's kind of the home base for Photoshop. If you click on the Photoshop icon in the top left here, you'll actually see the interface or the workspace for Photoshop. So let's go back here and you can always toggle between these with the little home button here and the Photoshop icon there. Um, I'm just going to open the most recent file here so that you can see we've got our layers palette on the right, our tools on the left. And I just kind of want to give you a basic orientation of the workspace in Photoshop so that you're more familiar with it. If you've been using Photoshop uh, for any amount of time, you'll probably find most of this stuff redundant, in which case you can skip this video entirely. But for those of you newly coming into Photoshop or if you're not that familiar with the workspace, I want to go through it real quick. So first of all, here you have the options bar and depending on which tool you have selected, that options bar is going to change. So if I'm on the move tool, I'm going to have options for moving objects. Um, I can auto select, I can align. Um, if I go on to my marquee selection, I can change the feather, I can change it to a fixed ratio or fixed size, and I can also access select and mask. And that's going to be true for most of my selection tools. I'm going to have a feather adjustment and also have the select and mask. If I go into one of the smart selection tools, I'll also have select subject. And as I go through each of these tools, you can see that option bar changing. All right, next we have the tools bar and that is on the left here. And with this little button right at the top of it, you can actually make it either one column or two column. Um, and also true of pretty much any palette or um, kind of bar in Photoshop, you can click on the top here and just drag it out and that'll make it its own kind of independent floating palette. So if I click on one of these here, I can drag that out similarly and it'll become a floating palette. And to remount it, just click, drag, and then you can see that blue line appear. That allows me to either put it here, put it here, or I can pretty much just kind of move around and you can see where um, Photoshop allows me to place this. So anywhere where it highlights blue, it allows me to dock it in that position. So in this case, I'll just put it back here. Okay, so that's our tools palette. Uh, the default position for that is on the left here. Um, you can change it if you want, but personally, I'm so used to it being there that um, I really wouldn't want to change it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back there. Okay, so back to our basics. We have our options bar here, our toolbar here, and our palettes or windows over here. Now, these windows are all represented here. So these are all the various windows. And then here you have the application frame, the options bar, which is this bar here, and your tools bar, which is here. Now for application frame, if I turn that off, you can see I don't have my kind of canvas background of Photoshop here. It's just showing my desktop in the background there. So generally I always keep that on. Um, one other thing to note here is you can see how this image is mounted directly into my application frame. I can actually drag that out and have just a floating image. Now this is important or I should say helpful when you have multiple images open and you want to drag something from one image to another. So let's just open another image here. Do this one here. Um, you can see within this window I can have tabs. I can also drag this up and you can see that blue highlight. 
it's now going to mount it into my workspace here but I can also have one mounted in the workspace and one free floating and that's very helpful if I need to compare two images or if I need to take something and drag it into this image okay so that's that to switch between um, various documents that you have open you can go down here to window and you'll see them listed at the bottom and then you can switch between them that way you can also on your keyboard go command and then on the top left of your keyboard under escape there's um, it's above the tab I don't know what it's called but that button holding down command and clicking on it will toggle through your open documents. Okay, so let's close that. The other thing I wanna show you is how these windows work and how you can place them. So essentially a window has a tab and then has the contents of that window. And you can see here our libraries. Um, it has the contents of our libraries our properties has the contents of properties and so forth. So each of these, in addition to having a tab, also has an icon. So those are kind of your options. And you can also see each of these windows has that. If I collapse it, it'll turn it into its icon. If I open it up, it'll turn it into the full window. Also, you can drag this out, make it a little bit bigger, and then you can have the icon and the word. So if you're not familiar with all the um, icons in Photoshop quite yet, you may want to just open this up a little bit so that you can see what that tab is. Okay, so that's how those work. And again, by clicking and dragging on the tab, you can change the location of these. As a general rule, um, the palette or the window that you're going to be using the most is layers. So that's the one in your workspace that you should dedicate the most room to. Um, up here, right above layers, I usually either have the histogram or color, just because those are the two that I use the most after layers. Next to layers, I'll usually have channels and paths. These three kind of work together. You can transfer selections between them. Um, you know, like here, I can make a selection from my path and then start using it in my layers. So these three, you should always have open together as separate tabs that you can cycle through. Above that, I would have color or histogram. And then everything else I would put on the side. Now, generally my workflow is as I'm working in Photoshop, if I find that I need a window, so let's say I wanted to do an action and I don't have my action palette up anywhere, I would go here, click on actions. It's going to now add it to the sidebar. And the next time I need it, I can always look for it here. Now, let's say I use it it, let's say it's something I don't use often. So let's say 3D. That's something I don't use often in, in Photoshop. All right, so it's now added it, but let's say I don't want it in the sidebar. All I have to do is drag it out like that and close it. I can also right mouse click and go close. Okay, so that's how you add or subtract things from this side panel here. And that's how you set up the workspace to your liking. Now, Photoshop does have some pre-made workspaces. Essentials is the default. That's the one I use. Um, most importantly, it puts your layer, it prioritizes your layers palette, gives that a lot of room on the right, um, and it puts the histogram and color in the top here. It puts your tools on the left. It's kind of everything in its place. This is usually how you'll work in Photoshop. Now, if you are doing something particular, like let's say you're doing 3D or motion, you can go to those. Motion, for example, adds the timeline to the bottom here and also um, places some tools that you'll probably use more when you're doing 3D. Um, as you can see here, it's uh, added the timeline. It's put my libraries and adjustments here. Um, it's gotten rid of color. It's added the 3D block here. So basically just setting up the workspace for 3D or for a timeline there. Uh, same with 3D. That's going to prioritize 
uh, 3D over here, so that's made it an open panel next to layers. And these workspaces are also all accessible on the top right here. If I click back to Essentials. Now let's say I make my adjustments to this. Um, I want brushes, for example, and I want brush settings. So I'm going to add all these in here. And I'm going to add this one in here next to it. Now you'll notice when I drag this, I have two options. If I put it on top, it'll add it to the tab group. If I put it between, it'll make it its own tab group. Now, the difference between that is when I click, uh, hang on one second. If it's one tab group and I click on one of these, the other one will be accessible through a tab here. And if they're not in the same tab group like this, uh, when I open this one, I have to separately open this one to access the brush settings versus the preset brushes. So four things that you commonly use together like brushes and brush settings, you'll probably want to put those in the same tab group. And to do that, we're just going to hover over them. Same with your type tools. For example, your paragraph and character usually come together. So as you can see, when I opened one, it actually added that tab group to my side panel here. So now I have this, um, I've made some adjustments to this, and I want this to be my standard workspace. I can go here, workspaces, and say new workspace. I can call this Rickards workspace. Um, if I want to include my menus and toolbars, which I do, I'll include those. Click on save. And now, when I switch up my workspace, I can always go back to my records workspace. So that's how you set up your workspace in Photoshop. The two other things that I want to cover real quick is this down here. And you'll notice that the shortcut is F. And what this does is it toggles through the three modes in Photoshop. So the first one is standard screen mode. That's the one we're on. Here you can see all your tools. Uh, the tool option bars and all your palettes. Next one is called full screen mode with menu bar. Okay, so again, I have most of what I had before, except for I don't have the application window. So I have a little more real estate when I'm working. Um, the other advantage of this over the other mode, so for example here, when I'm zoomed out to see the whole image, my pan doesn't work, okay? Whereas if I go into full screen mode, my pan does work. So that's a little difference between those two modes, aside from the application window that you see disappear between them. Um, and it's actually a reason where uh, why I usually prefer this mode because I like to always have my hand tool as an available option. Um, and that's just the space bar, by the way. So that's the difference between those two. And then finally, you have full screen mode. This used to be called professional mode. And that's basically um, in full panels are hidden. They can be accessed in the size of the screen or revealed by pressing tab. Okay, so let's go to full screen. If I hit tab, I can see them. If I hit tab again, they disappear. I can also go here. And if I, if I kind of bring my mouse to those areas, um, well, I guess to just the left here, you can see my tool panel. Now this is for someone who really knows what they're doing or if you're presenting to someone, you have someone coming to look at your work, just hit F and it'll kind of make it the full screen there. And you'll notice that in both of these modes, hitting tab will make all your panels disappear. So that's another thing to know that doesn't just apply to full screen mode, that applies to any mode that you're in. If you hit tab, you'll make everything disappear except for your image. Okay, so the shortcuts to remember there are F and it just toggles through. So there's no going backwards, you just toggle through all three. So that's what F does and then in any of your workspaces, if you hit tab, 
all your panels are going to disappear, giving you more real estate for your image. Okay, I think that covers the basics of the workspace in Photoshop. Hopefully you learned something. Um, like I said at the beginning, this probably is redundant for most Photoshop users, but if you're just beginning in Photoshop or if, like me, you go into Photoshop and just learn the tools you need for the very project that you're doing, hopefully this overview provides you with some new tips and tricks on how to customize the workspace to your liking in Photoshop.